Hi, and welcome to the second part of the Design Bid Build Delivery Method. If you missed the first episode, check it out right here, okay? And then come back to this one after you've seen the first. Welcome back, everybody. This is Chris Conkle. Welcome to my channel. This channel is all about helping you master construction so that you can become an industry leader. Today, we're going to be getting into the second part of the Design Bid Build Delivery Method. My least favorite part, actually. Now, <clears throat> this is gonna be pretty boring, guys. All right, but if you're studying for your PMP certification, your, your PMP exam, you wanna be a project manager someday, you're gonna have to know this stuff. Okay, so I have to cover it because it's uh, still an essential part of the, that PMP exam, okay? Um, to continue on where we left off, last episode I, you know, I, I went over the design bid build, um, you know, in, a, in general. The whole thing uh, kind of summarized it. Now I got to get into more detail for those of you who are serious about your PMP exam. <clears throat> this is the owner's organization matrix, okay, for a design bid build uh, delivery method. So we know already. Actually, we don't know already. Let's just start Let's start fresh and think. We know the owner has an idea. He needs something built. She needs something built to uh, maximize their profit for, for their company, right? To So that they can expand and make more money. That's 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 basically, the, basically it. Okay. <clears throat> so the owner... Owners don't necessarily know construction, right? Like they, they, they have needs, but to fulfill those needs, they need experts who who know construction, right? So a lot of big companies will have what's called a capital projects officer. All right. So if you're in government or anything like that, you're guaranteed to have a capital projects officer. Now, if you're just like a like a smaller owner, and um, this could be even your a buddy of yours who's a contractor and know and knows what he's doing. Okay. So. In a big organization, they're going to have a dedicated capital projects officer. All right. The, the the reason why that I mentioned that, if you're just like a homeowner or you're just some guy who's got lots of money and wants to invest into a construction project, well, my advice to you is to find somebody who can act as a capital projects officer. Whether, it, whether it's a friend of yours, okay, or a friend of a friend, somebody who understands construction, somebody who knows the, what's going on. Because... Without that, the chances of you getting ripped off or scammed are very high, okay? So you need that. You need a level of protection there. Don't go into something uh, not knowing how to do it, all right? Okay, so the capital projects officer, you can see there's no indirect relationship, right? Like we learned before, privity of contract, and then there's agency relationship, right? So there's no agency relationship here there's just a direct relationship between parties <clears throat> the financial officer is the accounting right that's pretty obvious in big firms a lot of a lot of companies medium sized to big companies will have a accounting department like somebody who does all of the accounting uh, who processes all the progress payments and things like that okay so the owner's project representative would be like the owner's project manager okay somebody who is there uh, for the day-to-day -day construction of it right like they're not there every single day but they could be depending on the size of the project the size of the company but generally a project manager will have lots of projects going on right so the but the owner's project rep is the level that needs to have a lot of knowledge in construction okay um so you got your buddy here you got your you got your pro capital projects officer who knows construction but the owner's project rep should know should know it inside and out like it be current right and relevant so the owner's inspector and then there's the testing agency okay so this is how this works right so the owner's inspector could be somebody placed on site 
full time, right? They do the day-to-day -day record keeping of all of the changes and uh, they report on progress and any problems, anything like that. They're the ones who do all the reports, okay? They report to the project, to the owner's rep, the owner's project rep. Testing agencies, they don't work directly for the owner. Definitely not. <clears throat> the, the testing agency, they do compaction tests. So the, the grade, right? right? So when you're, uh, you know, you're, the ground, ground compaction, okay? Uh, concrete strength. So these guys, when the, when the concrete trucks show up, there are those little tiny engineer guys that hop out of those little tiny white trucks and put the concrete into some kind of um, like silver cylinder with some gauge on the top of it. And then they, they test the compaction that way. Right, so the the um, what is it? Uh, not PSI, but uh, I don't know. It's something. Uh, it's not relevant for this anyway. Anyways, they make sure the concrete is is the right grade. It's supposed. It's the right uh, whatever that you know. So the and then there's reinforcing steel placement. So that's the rebar. Okay, so rebar has to be tied properly. It has to be in the right spots. Okay, so um, they have to inspect to make sure before they pour concrete that the rebar, it, it, you know, the, they'll, they'll, they, there will be shop drawings uh, b based on the details and the site conditions that the um, inspectors will, you know, they'll go off, right? They'll make sure everything's good. <clears throat> uh, the weld inspections, well, there's lots of things. Like when you're doing QDEC uh, on, you know, on the, on um, like uh, the joists and, and the, yeah, I think they're joists too, right? Uh, anyways, anything anything that needs welding in, in the field needs to be inspected. The welds are inspected to make sure it's good. Uh, same thing with, uh, with the structural steel, the iron, the bolt torque inspections. Uh, all that's done. So uh, they make sure that everything is tied into the pile caps properly. Um, and then, of course, the the main areas, you know, for where the, the building connects, the Q-deck and all that connects, they, they make sure that everything's good, okay? So, so some of these guys are hired by the owner to inspect for the engineers, okay? So there's a, a, there's underneath the owner's matrix, you know you have architect, engineers, contractor, right? So the owner pays for testing, okay? Uh, he'll be, these testing agencies will be working on behalf of the architects and engineers, right? So they'll, their reports will go directly to the uh, architects, engineers, the uh, product rep, and uh, the um, capital offers officers project as well. We'll probably get it. We'll get everything. <clears throat> okay. So what I've written down here is the one to one. So the capital projects officer uh, is there for the like the, um, the at the beginning of the project for design and conception, um, and then is only there after to approve like major change orders. Okay, so anything, any major changes in, like it has to be pretty big for the capital projects officer to get involved in it and have to approve that, right? So anything big that has to be changed, you know, it, it has to be approved to the financial officer before the financial officer will release any payment for that. Okay, so there's, uh, once we get into it, like there's a, there's a timeline here, like there's certain, uh, certain lengths of time that this has to be done in, right? <clears throat> Uh, to the uh, financial officer, so project cash flow management. So the financial officer has to plan um, plan for the project, right? So there's a table of values that they put to the schedule, and that's how they uh, do projections, okay? Um, so the owner's prime contact for the architect and contractor is the owner's rep, the owner's project manager. So the it, the way it goes is is actually a lot of the times, um, you're going to have, uh, the architect right underneath the owner, right? And sometimes the architect can act as the inspector. Okay. So you have an arch architect and then, sorry, I might, and then a contractor. So that's how that works. Okay. So <clears throat> any communication at all has to go in this direction. Okay, so you know, the architects and contractors never ever contact the capital projects officer and definitely not the owner. 
definitely not the owner, right? So there, this is how com complicated construction is, okay? Like there's so many levels of protection, sort of, is what we call it. But this, it's organization, but it's also a legal mumbo jumbo mess of protection, okay? Um, so number four, the owner's inspector, which is clerk of the works, that's the old school term, but you, you might have to know that for your PMP certification, okay? So clerk of the works is the owner's inspector, okay? Um, and then outside agency, the testing agency. So we've kind of gone over that. So the, the progress of the project is recorded by the owner's inspector, who could be the architect. Um, the owner's rep, like the owner's project manager, could also be somebody in the from the architectural firm. But there's going to be, like the financial officer, the accountant is going to be a, like his totally separate entity, right? Um, yeah, so that's how that all works, right? If the contractor needs to reach the owner, for example, he has to go through or she has to go through all of this, all of these levels of communication. So you can imagine how much time it takes for her, you know, for, for communication to, you know, progress, to get through the ranks, right? It takes some time. So uh, everything has to be, everything has to be perfectly done. All your paperwork has to be perfect. I'm going to be getting into the um, architect's uh, matrix next. And then I'm going to go into the contractor's matrix. And then I'm going to go into the flow of information for design, build, build. Um, I, f I thought that I could do this in one video. I was joking myself because it's way too complicated uh, for me to cover in, you know, a 10 to 20 minute video. It's impossible. So I figured we'd just break it down into little 10 minute videos and uh, you guys can ask me questions in between. Make sure you guys ask me anything down in the comments, anything unclear, anything you need to, to know further from any, any of this. Let me know down in the comments. I will 100% answer you. Um, this is uh, complicated stuff and... Um, it's uh yeah it's uh it's a trip it's definitely a trip man um one day i hope to have a company this big but uh yeah i mean i've worked for companies that uh work for people this big but i've never worked on the actual owner side of it i have only only ever been on the uh, uh contractor side of things and seen how it works right um, i've had close connections with the architecture like the design firms the architects and engineers um, but they l prefer you going to them before going to the owner all right so um, when you're working with uh, 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 oh even if you're a subcontractor if you're a subcontractor okay uh, i'm just going to quickly put this here okay if you're a sub you can't really go to the architect only time you can go to the architect is in the bid stage so here's a little construction hack okay if you're um, a very active estimator or project manager if but estimator who's who are sorry but project manager who's estimating at the time if you're very active you're going to be smart and you're going to have as much communication with the architect as you possibly can that way you can develop an early relationship with them and they'll kind of gain, you know, you'll know, they'll start to respect you and understand you, right? Um, just keep it intelligent, keep it concise. Um, these guys love their designs, okay? Um, you gotta be very careful. Never, never bash their designs. Only uh, go at them with constructive, uh, you know, uh, questions and things like that, okay? Uh, offer suggestions on a, you know, on a, you know, be good about it. Okay, um, but the more contact that you can have with the architect in the during the bid time during the tender process, that's really good for you because when the contractor's been awarded and then they award you, okay, then that that line of communication is necessarily severed. It's broken. Okay, so when you're a sub, you after the contract award, you have to go through the through the prime contractor to get to the architect to get the answers from the owner, right? So if you have this relationship, okay, like I've known so many times where the architects then call me during the construction, right? Oh, you heard you're awarded, blah, 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 how's this? What's this, what's this, right? And uh, 
the the contractor just has no say in it right when the architect comes to you then you're laughing right so you're not breaking any rules uh so yeah that's just a little little construction hack for anybody who's in estimating a uh, project manager who's estimating uh even even small company owners when you're when you're bidding this is the time okay as a subcontractor this is the time to, to build that relationship with all the different uh, designers okay but um, yeah, so anyways, I know this is pretty crazy, boring stuff, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope I'm really helping you guys out. Um, have you any questions at all, leave them down in the comments. I'm be so glad to answer them. Um, if you're new to Chris Conka Vlogs, make sure you subscribe right down below and uh, YouTube thinks you might like this video right behind me. So give it a watch. Hit that like button. Peace, man. This is Chris. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>